They just sell candles and they're making overhead. You know what kind of fish those are? No. Uh, don't be coy. <laughs> coy fish. It can be overwhelming. Think a second. Have we seen this shirt before? Progressive can't save you from becoming your parents, but we can save you money when you bundle home an auto with us. But you know what? I'm still going to get it. Welcome to Paradise Sham, NCAA on a Paradise Land. From near and far, them a travel all along for come. Experience a beautiful white sand so Paradise Sham in the Virgin Island. Paradise. The sun is shining once again in St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands as we say good day to you from St. Thomas as the Brown Bears are getting set to take on the Bradley Braves. Brown three and two, Bradley one and three. Both teams coming off a loss yesterday. Bradley fell to Colorado State. Brown lost to the Creighton Blue Jays and they look for their first win on the island here this afternoon. As we welcome you in alongside Kevin Lehman, I am Brad Wells. And Kevin, these two teams both play a physical style. We saw it yesterday. They both came away with a loss. They're looking for a win here today. Well, good signs from Bradley. Great start in the first half against a very talented Colorado State team. They held a team that was seventh in the nation, averaging 96 points, 30 below their average. So it's a Bradley team that's physical, will challenge at the rim. And you look at Brown. Go back and look at it. They went to Chapel Hill. Career high, 24 points from Terry Roberts, six rebounds. And this guy is a theft artist in Juco in two years. He had 122 steals. Bradley has found their point guard. He can deliver the ball and has had some quickness to the rim. You can see him spray it out to three-point shooters. I really like Terry Roberts' game. And the tip is up, and we are underway. Brown gets the opening possession. For a Brown player you like, Jalen Ganey will be important in this physical matchup today. Well, keep an eye on Ganey. He is number 22. He is the rim protector for the Brown Bears, and he will need him to challenge the size inside of the Bradley Braves. So Tamanon Cho gets the start. That's Dan Friday, a fast start for the Bears getting the first bucket as you have David Mitchell, Dan Friday, Jalen Ganey, Tamanon Cho, and Paxson Wojcik starting for Brown. For Bradley now with the basketball, Terry Roberts, Connor Hickman, Malavai Leons, Jashan Henry, and Rink Mast. Friday with a good start yesterday in that contest against Creighton. There's Leons going to work down low against Mitchell. And Mitchell wins the battle as Ganey secures the rebound. Brown yesterday led in scoring by Keno Lilly Jr. Had 12 points. He'll come off the bench. Wojcik had 10 in the game yesterday against Creighton and gets two here early. Wojcik, the transfer from Loyola, a winning program at Really impressive in yesterday's and, game. And Paxson has been a part of scouting Bradley the last two years. Loyola in the Missouri Valley Conference has faced Bradley twice each of the last two years. He knows this personnel, Kevin. Brad, that is a great point. He could done the scouting report. He did tell us that we talked a little bit before Tip that he actually gave the tips to some of the coaches on what this Bradley team likes to do. His offensive foul on Rink Mast as Friday stands in there and takes the charge. There's the kick. Friday, outstanding help side defense outside the restricted arc, feet set. This is a Brown team that can really defend at a high level. That is Mike Martin, the coach who played at Brown, his calling card. His teams have always been good defensively. Mike Martin in his 10th season. As David Miss Mitchell from the corner lets it fly. An assistant at Brown under Glenn Miller. He's an assistant at Penn as well. As a player, Mike Martin was part of the winningest class in Brown history. 63 wins as a player. Brad, there's always something special about going back to your alma mater and being the coach and leading that program 
tell Mike Martin really enjoys where he's at. And he's got high expectations for this Brown team. He likes this team too, likes what they have, has some things he knows this team can improve on. And today wants to be focused on physicality and post play when facing this Bradley team. Well, I'm sure that Paxson Wojcik told his coaches, you play Bradley, you got to bring your steel toe boot. Inside. Foul of that last play was on Terry Roberts. That's his first. Friday on the drive, the turnaround blocked by Leons. Roberts that quickly ahead to Hickman. Length we talked about with Leons on the block. It's Roberts losing the handle. Logic penetrating, shot in the lane. Got his first one, that one off the iron. Leon's wide open in the corner. This would be for three, and Bradley is on the board. Leon's the Junior College Player of the Year. It's a big get for the Bradley Braves, and he has a huge upside. Out of Mineral Area College. Averaged 18 points per game, nine and a half rebounds. Here's one thrown up for Ganey. And Ganey's going to get it again. Two hands with the finish. Ganey with some pop off the floor. But he is no more for his defense. Defensive player of the year two years ago. Hickman able to finish. Able to hang in the air. They really, really like this freshman, the Bradley Braves do. Wojak tried to jump that dribble handoff. Hickman with a great read. Back cut to the basket. Gets there, get a little contact, and now a chance for a three-point play. I tell you, that three ball earlier by Leons was big for this Bradley team. Brad, they have really struggled to knock in the three ball. That's one of the keys here. They've got to they being able to knock that in. They're shooting 23% on the year from distance to Bradley Braves. And Brian Wardle just kind of feels that everything else is falling together for him. They start making some shots. They'll really be a dangerous team. Yesterday from outside, they were 6 of 24. In the first half, though, 1 for 8 from deep. We've seen this in Bradley teams in the past. This is a marathon season for them, not a sprint. They've been very successful in postseason play in the Missouri Valley Tournament, winning it in 2019 and again in 2020 after finishing in the middle of the league. The foul on Leon's tied 6-6. We'll be back with more first half action from Paradise. It's the U.S. Virgin Islands Paradise Jam. Welcome to the Virgin Islands. Oh, na, na. Oh, na, na, na. We connect with paradise. Oh, na, na. Oh, na, na, na. The VI smiles with me. With her emblems of the seas. The Virgin Islands, they are calling out to me. This is UVI. Your pathway to the world. We are the innovators, the community leaders, the healthcare providers. We are the record breakers. At UVI, we provide a world-class education with unmatched affordability and small class sizes. That means you are not just the number. At UVI, we care. You are the center of everything we do. Welcome to the Virgin Islands. Oh, na, na. Oh, na, na, na. We connect with paradise. Oh, na, na. Oh, na, na, na. The VI smiles with me. With her emblems of the seas. The Virgin Islands, they are calling out to me.
6-6 is our score. Let's take a look at our keys to the game brought to you by Body Armor. Kevin, let's start with the Bradley Braves. CDR, compete, defend, rebound. That is Brian Wardle's mantra. That's what they look for when they recruit players for the Braves program. And they've got to get some confidence from deep. That three ball's got to start going in. They're off to a good start. It would say Leon's hit one. And when you watch Bradley, I always call it bully ball. They're going to throw up in the glass, and they are going to go get it. You better have your steel toe boots on ready to play against Bradley. Brown so far facing that bully ball and that physicality. Let's take a look at Brown's body armor keys. Yeah, the game. and Brown needs to get off to a fast start. Slow start yesterday. They've done that so far. They need to win the tournament battle, and they got to knock in some threes also. Just one attempt from outside for Brown as they're three for six inside the arc. Here in the first four minutes of play. Pretty good pace to this basketball game here. Game one of our second day, the Paradise Jam. Cho gets close, contact on the arm, and a foul on Bradley, and that goes on Jason Kent, sophomore out of Oak Forest, Illinois. Is Kent on the floor with Ari Boya and Mikey Howell checking in during that timeout. And for Brown, you have Nana Owusu Anane, freshman out of Ontario on the court, as well as Keno Lilly Jr., Ivy League Rookie of the Week. Had 12 points yesterday against Creighton to lead the Bears. Very talented freshman for the Bears. At the line is Cho, a graduate student the Ivy League, because of COVID last year, allowed graduates to play. There are 10 in the Ivy League, and Cho is the one representative graduate student playing for Brown. First time ever they'll allow. First time ever. It's going to be the last time ever we talk to Coach Martin. It's going to be a one-year exemption. Brown on a fast break. Friday's shot will not fall as, how about Owusu Anane? Tracking that ball down, keeping it alive to start that fast break. Well, I was impressed by your quickness as you jumped over there. I thought he was coming at me. <laughs> he was coming into our table. <laughs> Taking one for the team, Brad. I don't know if I was we going to protect you or if I was jumping out of the way to protect myself. Well, the most important thing is that we don't get these Hawaiian, or not, I can't say Hawaiian, these tropical shirts, paradise shirts stained. By Absolutely any coffee or drinks. Looking sharp today. Look one for the team. We started to go a little paradise look. That island vibe just overcomes you. Here's Roberts from outside. I got a little more beach time in today. Yeah, you, uh, you're going to set the record for <laughs> you and your wife Molly on number of beaches visited. Lily Jr. feeds it inside to Cho, and Cho's looking good so far. Kind of testing to see if he is at full strength. He's going to get a breather right now, but so far he's looked solid. Yeah, dealing with a hip impingement, so they've been resting him, trying to get his sea legs back, so to speak, and Mike Martin said, hey, it's time. we got to start him today. Backdoor cut by Mitchell. Oh, what a pass. Somehow got it. Wusu Anane and able to secure the rebound is Montgomery, Zeke Montgomery. The freshman didn't see any time in yesterday's game. With the absence of Vile Tavanainen, Zeke Montgomery, a freshman out of Louisville, is going to get some playing time for the Braves today. Number three there in the red, the top of the key. What is the loss of Tavanainen today? What's Bradley going to miss the most? He's a sharpshooter, but he's starting to do a little bit of everything now as an upperclassman. Gives him some leadership. This is a relatively young Bradley team. They really like the leadership that he got from Vile, and he can really stretch defense his ability to shoot the three ball. Paxton Wojcik shot off the mark. And a foul on Brown after Leon's grabbed the rebound. Mitchell whistled for the foul. That'll be his second. 
We saw how physical it is inside when you attack the rim against the Braves. There's a lot of red jerseys that surround that paint. Here's Leon's underneath. Kick it out. Here's Howell from the top of the key. And it goes in. Another three from outside for the Braves. That's a big plus. Howell not known for being a three-point shooter, more of a distributor. The transfer from San Diego was a big-time assist man at San Diego. Just his third three of this young season. It's game five for Bradley, game number six of the year for Brown. Well, Mikey Howell is one of the leading assist men in the nation. He spent four years at San Diego. Graduate transfer into this Bradley program. Has his degree in international business, pursuing a master's in management. One of the grad transfers. Substitution rink mast back into the game for the Braves. Had an early foul. Sean Henry back on the floor. Mass is huge for this Bradley team. He's struggled to knock in threes. Uh, once he starts doing that, he is a dynamite as a pick and pop man. It's a foul on Wojcik up top. Wojcik, you can just kind of tell, kind of that extra familiarity with some of the Braves. Yeah, we had a nice talk with Paxson Mojic for the game. You know, his dad is an assistant at Michigan State. He's got a brother. He's going to be a freshman playing at Harvard. His dad, Denim. his dad, Doug, played with David Robinson at Navy. His brother, Denim, a freshman at Harvard. And what he said was a nice touch was they were both in the bubble in the NCAA tournament. You know, he was at Loyola, made that sweet, sweet 16 run, and Michigan State was there also, even though they got beat in that play-in game by the Bruins of UCLA. But it's a little bit of a family affair for Paxton Wojcik and his father. Foul on Montgomery. And Hickman comes back in. Montgomery checks out. So up to the free throw line, David Mitchell, the senior. Just two points yesterday on three field goal attempts. Brad, I like the aggressiveness of Brown. They are not shying away from the physicality of Bradley. They're driving this ball into the paint, challenging Bradley. I think I think he saw it a little bit against Creighton even. It just the size of Creighton I think was too too much for Brown, but Physically, they, they tried to match Creighton as best they could. Yeah, they're not going back off. This is a, this is a tough thing. You don't go into Chapel Hill and lead them for 26 minutes unless you got a little moxie to you. Rink mast for three off the iron. Had a rough day yesterday, 0 for 6 from three-point land. Tough day at the office for Rink mast. Some open looks like the one we just saw. Around shot by Ganey. That's Henry on the rebound. And Ganey not known as a post-up player, more of a defender, shot blocker, and rebounder. Mast over Ganey, rolls off the rim. Brown with the ball, two-point lead. Under 12 to play, first half. Hot start offensively for both teams has cooled the last few minutes, Mitchell with the rebound, calls timeout. That will bring us to a break. Brown by two. With Think outside the oven and get Thanks Grilling with Ace. Get a Traeger grill to make tasty turkey and desserts. This week, take advantage of great deals on Traeger with free assembly and delivery on all grills, $3.99 and up. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Every time I eat stuffed crust from Pizza Hut, I play this song. But watch what happens when I play it backwards. Eat stuffed crust backwards, just $12.99. The original stuffed crust. 
only from Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hut. Eleven thirty-eight to play in the first half. It is a three-point lead for Brown at eleven eight. And Kevin, you talked about the physicality coming into this game. As uh, in the paint right now, Brown leading Bradley six to two. You're talking about them matching that physicality. Bradley's outscored its opponents in the paint in all four games this season. Well, it's been huge. Their margin of in the paint over other teams, almost 13 points per game, and that's been consistent. And you're looking at a guy right there, Mike Morton, that knew that his team had to be prepared to attack this Bradley team inside. Defensive players of the year in the Ivy League, Kevin. They come through Brown as... Uh, the only Brown players named Ivy League Defensive Players of the Year, coached by Martin, include Jalen Ganey back in 2020, Obi Akoli in 2019, Cedric Kuakumensa in 2013, and in 2014. Well, we watched some practice two days ago, and you could tell this was a defensive-minded coach in Mike Martin. And remember, this is a team in the Ivy League that had no games last year and no formal practices because of the COVID shutdown in the Ivy League. Free throw by Cooley is good. Three-point lead. There you see Coach Martin in his 10th year, a Brown grad back in 2004. 20 wins in the 18-19 season. Into the CBI was the... Ivy League Coach of the Year. You see Cooley with those two free throws. Mike Martin told us he need to get Cooley on the floor more in this game. He's one of the three talented freshmen that Brown was able to recruit during that COVID non-season. It actually helped them in their recruiting wars as these three players weren't seen much their senior year of high school. Got him in for early visits and weren't really able to visit any other place. There's Ganey sticking with the rebound. It's second and third effort by Ganey. Kimo Ferrari in the corner. Ganey's one of those guys he's, we call, he's got a high motor. Let's see at the defensive end. There's another high motor guy in Ferrari. Oh, I love this dude. He'll change the complexion of a game, Ferrari. There's Mitchell, shot clock down to two. Shot up, does not hit the rim, but we have a foul called before the shot clock goes off. So there's going to be a foul on Jason Kent. It's going to be his second personal foul. So you have Terry Roberts with two, Kent with two. Roberts is on the bench. And now Kent will check out as Leon's back onto the floor. Bradley with Maxi Cano, 6'7", freshman guard from France on the court. The first look of Icano. Brown's winning some battles right now. They're winning the battle in the paint, and that's getting to the free throw line. They are not backing down from this physical Bradley team. One of two for Cooley. And last touch by Cho. Jackson Wojcik back onto the floor. Cooley checks out. Brown by five. Nope. But Brown with just more attempts. Hickman a bucket and a foul improves that team percentage. Another and one opportunity here for Connor Hickman, the freshman out of Bloomington, Indiana. He has made some great reads. Watch this. This is a pin down by Rink Mast. Not only does Hickman have the jumper, he's also got Rink Mast on the dump down if he wanted to. This freshman has a high basketball IQ. Number 10 in the red, Connor Hickman. Playing through contact now on two different plays as 
That does not fall for Friday. Ganey cannot get it to go. Friday still sticking with it, battling Mast, and last touch by Friday. Second chance opportunities for Brown, not able to convert. It's a foul on Ferrari for reaching in. Fifth team foul on Brown, excuse me, sixth team foul on Brown. Or what they were seeing, Max Ikino, the 6'7 freshman from France, one of the six foreign players that Bradley has. He's running the point guard position for the Braves. Backdoor pass, looking for Henry. Leon's led him just a little too much. Well, Roberts picked up that second foul. Terry Roberts, that is a problem for Bradley. You have Roberts with two personal fouls. He's on the bench. Got David Mitchell with three for Brown as he's sitting down. And Mitchell is not as important to this flow of the offense for Brown as Roberts is for Bradley. Roberts with 24 points yesterday. Cho went right at the contact, no whistle. Here comes Bradley on a break. They've got four on two if they can go. Here's Hickman into the lane. That floater does not fall, and Cho chasing it down. Comes away with it, hits the end line. They're gonna say out of bounds. As Cho slid into the Brown bench. And boy, a little slow to get up underneath the basket as we take a look. Look at the effort by number 10, Hickman. Well, Kevin, his brother Garrett plays college football. <laughs> yeah, that does not surprise me. <laughs> Let me think. Let me guess. He's a linebacker. <laughs> plays at Indiana State. Well, Hickman had no <laughs> chance to get that basketball and able to gain possession for Bradley. There was a timeout on the floor. Bradley takes the timeout. And Arab. Ari Boya walking off gingerly with the trainer. Well, here's a look at the Paradise Jam schedule. Games we have coming up, two today. The game we're in right now at the top. Coming up next, Colorado against Duquesne. And then on Sunday, the Creighton Blue Jays take on the Colorado State Rams and the Southern Illinois Salukis take on the Northeastern Huskies. All right here on ESPN3. Two high-powered offenses there with Creighton and Colorado State. We're going to be busy during that game, Brad, because they will get up and down the court. Teams that have very high expectations. Well, this game here, you know, both these teams had disappointing losses yesterday. They are going at it. Tooth and nail here this afternoon. Bradley with the basketball. What did you see from Bradley yesterday? Just a six-point loss to that Colorado State team. And you mentioned it. Held him under 30 points for John the season as Econo gets a bucket to fall. Well, I thought Bradley they really came out with a great game plan. The physicality was a problem for Colorado State. They got the game at the speed that Bradley wanted at. Colorado State able to get, rev up the the RPMs in the second half and get their offense going. So they played through their big man. Wojcik splits between Hickman and Henry, draws the foul on Hickman. You know, yesterday's performance, David Roddy in the second half, he ended up with 30 points, nine rebounds for Colorado State in that win over Bradley. Bradley just did not have an answer for Roddy in the second half. They tried like three different players to match up on Roddy. None successful as he threw in, they said, 30 on 14 field goal attempts. Wojcik with three points. Brown really spreading out their offense. 
Six different players with two or more points. And Ward was going to see if he can survive here in the first half with Terry Roberts on the bench and the freshman running his point guard position, Axi Kono. Here's Henry trying to get in the lane. He's been quiet this first half. And Cho pulls that rebound away from Ikano. Eight minutes. Friday on the drive. Foul called on Henry. And for Jashan Henry, that's his second personal foul. And a timeout on the floor, 7.50 to play. We will step aside as you have Bradley and Brown in a physical battle here in Paradise. Welcome to the Virgin Islands. Oh, na, na. Oh, na, na, na. We connect with Paradise. Workshop is a nonprofit organization that provides hope, healing, and purpose to at risk and high risk young men and women in the U.S. Virgin Islands through mentorship, education, mental health counseling, on the job training, and job placement. Become a part of the change and learn more about our program at mybrothersworkshop.org. Bradley and Brown in a physical battle here with just under eight minutes to go in the first half. Brown with a two-point lead. That's Dan Friday, a sophomore out of Detroit, Michigan. Again, career high 21 points against North Carolina. Gets a couple free throws to go. He has four early on here. Missed the first part of the 2019-2020 season with injury. So got about half a year there. And then the Ivy League did not play any basketball a season ago. Joe grabbing the wrist of Leons. Trying to swat that away. That's just the sixth team foul on Brown. And Brown is in the uh, double bonus that they're in. They've already shot 12 free throws. They're 11 of 12. 11 of those 18 points are from the free throw line. First free throws off the mark. Leones will get the second. Foul on the shot. Econo checks out Mikey Howell. The graduate senior back onto the floor for Bradley. Terry Roberts has spent a majority of this first half on the bench with two personal fouls for the Braves. They got some good minutes out of Econo. That was huge. Roberts gets the fouls and goes out. They're going to split the point guard duties between Mikey Howell and the freshman Econo. There is Cho showing his explosiveness. 
Whoa, he got down the paint in a hurry. Again, Brown attacking the rim on this physical Bradley defense. He's been battling a hip impingement a lot of this season. He looked pretty good on the hips on that move. Kent out to Howell, nice feed into Leon's. That's what Mikey Howell does, spread the court, let him attack. He's gonna find the open man. And the confidence of Leon's rose every game we watch him play. Just Bradley's second bucket in the paint this season. That's out of bounds off the top of the clock. And the shot from Cho. Not a aesthetically pleasing game that we're broadcasting, but this is what I expect from these two teams. Physical front lines. Going to be no easy baskets at either end. Well, it started pretty fast. Both teams were shooting up over 40%. And then the defenses and the physicality took overs. Montgomery knocks it in from outside. And Bradley, their third triple of the game. Well, the three balls got to go. One of the keys, they're going to their freshmen. The Braves are to get those three balls. Montgomery with a big one. Leon's whistled for his second personal foul. So now Bradley with Roberts, Henry, and now Leon's each with two fouls. Good look at Zeke Montgomery, freshman out of Louisville. Ferrari checking in for Friday. Icano into the game for Leon's. Now oh, Cho not only gives you that explosiveness, and you can see they're going to they're keep limiting his minutes. He's going to come back out after those free throws. And Mike Martin checking it every time to see how he's feeling. But you, you can just tell he is the emotional leader of this team. The grad student we talked about, the first in the history of Brown, brings him some maturity and leadership. There's Montgomery oh. showing the slash to the rim ability. The freshman flash, Montgomery. Where's he been? Bradley by one. Lily oh. Jr. for three, and Brown back in front. I was going to say, keep an eye on Lily, because you know this guy can score in bunches. He has been quiet in this game. Big three ball. Here is Kent, and Kent's going to get whistled for the forearm push. Offensive foul, wave the basket off. Both these teams are outstanding in their team defenses and their rotations. Wojcik, he sees this coming. He's able to work that set. defensive position in front of Kent. Slid his feet lateral, that is huge. They like run this play for Wojcik. Now Jason Kent with two personal fouls as well with that. So Darius Hanna on the floor. Here's Icano. Terry Roberts back out there playing with two. Traveling violation on Icano. 5.07 to play, first half action. Bradley's shooting has improved since you've seen Montgomery start to take over. The team now 41% from the floor. Brown shooting just 25% from the floor. But those seven turnovers by Bradley. The bugaboo, Ganey can't finish up near the rim. We'll see how long they keep Terry Roberts in there. I'm nervous just watching him play. But Bradley's got some foul issues. Roberts playing with two. Henry's got two. Roberts attacks. Ganey denies. Wojcik has the ball knocked away and a foul called on Howell. Brian will not happy with this one. Here's a look There's at the other end, the block from Ganey. Roberts would challenge Ganey. Our shot blocker at the rim redirects. 
He redirects a lot of shots. So, saw it yesterday against Creighton. Well, not only that, Brad, but it's smart to keep it in bounce, not to smash it out of bounds where Brad would get another possession. How many blocks do you see that go straight down to the court? <laughs> the volleyball spike. Ojik left. The second one short. Brown a two-point lead. Bradley the basketball. Well, this is a lineup, Bradley, that we have not seen all season. Montgomery in and out. Ganey the rebound. Three-point land in the half. Hannah over to Roberts. Delivers to Montgomery. Too strong, but Howell with the offensive rebound swatted away by Ferrari. And a timeout on the floor with 3.32 to play. The Brown Bears by two. Over the airport two. can be a real challenge for new yeah, homeowners yeah. who have become their parents. Okay, everybody, let's do a ticket check. Paper tickets. We're off to a horrible start, but we can overcome it. We're not going to point out our houses, landmarks, or major highways during takeoff. Don't buy anything. I packed so many delicious snacks. They're... Nope. Did you say ballpark when group two is going to get boarded? Two hours and 58 minutes. Progressive can't protect you from becoming your parents, but we can protect your home and auto when you bundle no, with someone us. Someone should have left home earlier. Think outside the oven and get Thanks Grilling with Ace. Get a Traeger grill to make tasty turkey and desserts. This week, take advantage of great deals on Traeger with free assembling delivery on all grills, $3.99 and up. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Welcome back to the University of Virgin Islands for the Paradise Jam Brown. Up 24-22 on Bradley. And Brown has dominated this game at the free throw line. 12 of 16 trips for the Brown Bears. Bradley just there seven times. And this is a physical game that we expected to see. Both these teams challenged each other at the rim and in the paint. And for Brown, you've got Scoring spread out amongst seven different players. We mentioned that Chow has been in there playing. The grad transfer that was injured and missed a couple games is back and gave him a real boost to this Brown team. And Bradley's trying to maneuver through some foul issues here in the first half, Brad. Different lineups. Now we've got Hickman back in, Mikey Howell at the point guard position. Rink Mast also back in the game. Here's Montgomery on the inbound. Got four different Braves all playing with two personal fouls. And Mast and Howell just not on the same page there. And Deshaun Henry, a big piece of the offense for Bradley, settled with two fouls, along with Roberts, their point man. But they're finding a way. So if you're Brian Warley, you're just trying to hang in here, Brad. You're trying to hang in and get this thing to halftime. Get those starters back in the game. Here's Ganey, another dunk. Boy, he just took the elevator to the top floor. Pushed that one through. He gets up quick. It's like it was on a Nerf hoop. Brown by four. Hickman, nice crossover. He's been able to get to the rim. Ganey changed that shot. Freshman, you can't be challenged that dude. He is the defensive player in the Ivy League, Ganey. Cho got out of control, loses it out of bounds. Keno Lilly Jr. to check in for the Bears. Cho, though, seven points, two rebounds, a steal. There's a Ganey. Doesn't get the block, Kevin, but that, that changed that shot. No question. And we talked about he was a big fact. We highlighted him off the top of this game as he is going to challenge you at the rim and not necessarily block him, but you're going to know he is there. Here's Friday off the window. I really like Dan Friday's game. He's got what we call a power guard, big upper body strength. Get 
leave that dude open. Quick trigger. The freshman knows where they hung the hoop. Hickman goes to Mast, and Mast, an offensive foul as Cho takes the charge on the Bradley big man. And Mast was hoping that he had to travel before the, before the charge. Both these teams outstanding in their defensive stances and awareness of where players are. Now, Rink Mask going to have to take a seat. Second personal foul. He's the fifth Brave with two first half fouls. Braves going even deeper into their bench. 14th foul of the game. Yeah, Connor Linky now in for the Braves. And so Wusu Anane. So you are looking at a Bradley team that has one starter. That'd be Connor Hickman, who did not start last night. And a timeout taken by the Braves. Brown by nine here with a minute to play in this first half. And we were just talking about Bradley trying to trim the gap. And Brown now extending that, doing it on the defensive end of the floor, but getting good looks on the offensive well, end, too. I think they saw the opportunity with all the foul issues. And you can see right there, there, there is Friday attacking three defenders, the strength to deliver the ball, and Ganey with the punch through. But they continue to drive in the paint and attack this Bradley defense. And of course, Bradley trying to piece this together with the foul issues. He doesn't have his normal guys in there. You know, and remember, Boya limped off with an injury. There's their other rim protector. He may not be able to play. We got Mass with foul issues. One of the most physical players, Deshaun Henry, out with two fouls also. Well, Brown taking advantage of the foul issues that the Braves are facing. Ari Boya walking around behind the Bradley bench trying to get loose, see if he feels like he can go. Here's Hickman on the back door cut, sneaks it by Friday. We saw that play yesterday Bradley against Colorado State come out of a timeout. Brian Wardle drew it up again. Great execution by Hickman. So timeout taken by Brown. We Hannah pops out. It's that fake handoff, back cut, and Wojcik should know better. He's played against <laughs> these Braves for years. Go get caught with your head on a swivel. Well, Bradley hitting from outside three for nine in this first half. Does that make you want to pressure that three-point line a little? I still think I, they're going to make it prove it to me. But both these teams, th th their mantra is they're going to try and take things away from you. So as the opposing coach, you try to use some counters and that open up that baseline for that backdoor cut is one of those counter moves. 45 seconds left to un. This first half. Brown by seven, looking for more here with the basketball. Bradley comes zone, out in his own. Zone defense by the Braves. I'm surprised we didn't see this earlier with their foul issues. There's Friday, the backdoor dunk is denied by Econo. The freshmen have played well for Bradley. Bradley's going to hold for the final shot. Down seven. Howell gets a screen from Linky. Now it's going to be Hickman. Step back three. Too strong off the glass, and it's Brown by seven at 33-26. And head coach Mike Martin has to be pleased with what he's seen from the Bears in the first 20 minutes. Well, I'm with you. I think his game plan was excellent. We're going to attack the rim there. You can see the challenge at the rim by Econo. There's a freshman. Not afraid of the moment. I've seen freshmen from both teams playing well, especially
physicality. Josh, impressed the way you came out begin this game and you continually attack that rim and it paid off with a lot of points at the free throw line for you. Yeah, it did. You know, I think we have some guys that can get downhill. I'd like to see us move the ball a little bit better uh, and, and space it and pass it and change sides a few times before we get downhill with our drives. But uh, I thought we missed some good ones, too. We, we got a much better flow the last five minutes offensively. But it's going to be a grinded out game. That's, uh, that's what we expected. Coach, 17 turnovers yesterday. You've got one here in the first half. You've got to be pleased with the ball handling of your squad. Yeah, that's great. That's a good stat. We, uh, the more bites you get at the apple, the better, right? Thank you very much, Coach. Mike Martin joining us here at the half as his Brown Bears. 33-26 a lead as we'll step aside and we'll come back. More from Paradise on St. Thomas Island in the U.S. Virgin Islands. This is the Paradise Jam. Welcome to the Virgin Islands. Oh, na, na. The more bites at the oh, apple, na, na, na. the better. I wrote that one down. Reconnect with Paradise. To me. Praters is proud to be associated with the Paradise Jam for the 10th year. The court is branded with Praters patented play on decals. These decals perform at the highest level of sport. They've been tested under the most extreme competitive conditions and are safe for athletes. Play on decals offer limitless branding for any court for any game. Our designers work with your team to bring your vision to life. Welcome to your U.S. Virgin Island. Is this paradise? Obviously, just better. Because unlike other islands, there is no language barrier. Yeah, man. And your cell phone works even at the easternmost point of the U.S. There's no roaming here. And your favorite team, watch every game live. Yeah. So why is it so much better here? Because this, my friend, is the American tourism. Your idyllic tropical getaway begins at Belongo Bay Beach Resort on St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands. We're family owned and famous for an all-inclusive package, friendly hospitality, one-of-a-kind amenities and experiences. Explore St. Thomas or sail to nearby islands and swim with sea turtles aboard our custom-built catamaran, Heavenly Days. Relax on the beach or take advantage of complimentary water sports and windsurf lessons. Come discover the Caribbean as it should be at Belongo Bay Beach Resort, St. Thomas. There's a special slice of paradise that lies in the Caribbean, where the warmth of the people greets you at every turn. Through their passion, you're going to live moments you will always remember. Savor our traditional flavors and explore the depths of the bluest ocean. Here, it's all about culture, history, and heart. If you want to feel the soul of the Caribbean, come to St. Croix and experience a vibe like no other. Thirty-three twenty-six is our score here at the half. As we let you know, CC1 Wine and Spirits is proud to sponsor the U.S. Virgin Islands Paradise Jam with the official beverages of the tournament, Coca-Cola, Dasani, Sprite, and Body Armor. Alongside Kevin Lehman, I am Brad Wells. Kevin, you said it was going to be a physical game. It was in that first half. We had points in the paint. But then we saw a lot of production from the bench as teams, they were forced to go to their bench. Yeah, both teams went deep and – Brian Wall has got to feel fairly good right now. He just survived with four of his starters with two fouls. Uh, that's a lot of minutes of experience. His freshman played really well. Got some good minutes out of Zeke Montgomery and some others. So if I'm in his shoes, it's a whole new half. But this is what Brown did, Brad, this entire game. These are points in the paint. Wojcik gets in there. They attacked and attacked. They were able to pay off and get to the free throw line. Big three by Lands to start this for Bradley. And these are two teams that are battling for everything they can get. You can see Ganey there with a punch down off a loose ball. And you got to win those loose ball battles in a game like this. You saw Hickman get to the rim a number of times, able to finish through contact. And that was a big spark for Bradley when they needed it. There's a huge three there on a Mikey Howell. 
Yeah, that's one of the problems Bradley's had, trying to find a range from the three. And they've had some bench players come off and get some big threes for him. And how about the freshman right there, six seven point guard, Econo really played well, gave some solid minutes for the Bradley Braves. But the story of the game might be this guy right there, number 25, Cho, who has got his first start. The fifth-year grad player for Brown. Emotional lift for the Bears. On this season, just a six-point average based on not being able to play a lot of minutes. But today, we're going to see if he's able to go at full strength. And so far, through the first 20 minutes, he has been able to. Terry Roberts just got that one swatted. The Braves need him back running his offense. It's going to be a different type of team with Roberts in the game. We see. talked about Ganey being a defensive force. We've seen him do a lot of production at the offensive end. And Rink Mass got a bucket inside. He struggled from the three-point line. You see him go inside there. Watch out for that dude. Lilly can light it up. You have to know where he is at all times. Lilly with six points that first half. As Brown holding a seven-point lead over Bradley. Hickman, seven points to lead the Braves, and we'll be back with more as we're at the half. It's Brown. A Snapchat app from Progressive rewards you for driving safe and driving less. Okay, what message did you hear this time? Yeah. Safe drivers can save using Snapshot. What Snapshot? What the commercial was about. I tune commercials out. Yeah, me too. They're always like, blah, blah, blah. Tell me about it. I'm going to a silent retreat next weekend. My niece got kicked out of one of those. For talking? Grand larceny. How about we get back to the savings? Yeah. Yes, I would like right? to talk about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay. Talking. Think outside the oven and get Thanks Grilling with Ace. Get a Traeger grill to make tasty turkey and desserts. This week, take advantage of great deals on Traeger with free assembly and delivery on all grills, three ninety nine and up. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Second half coming up in just a little bit. Right now, let's take a look at some first-half statistics brought to you by Coca-Cola. Individually, Hickman leading the way with six points for Bradley. Cho with seven for Brown. Here's a look at some team numbers. Big disparity, both rebounds and turnovers, Kevin. Well, we mentioned to Coach uh, Martin the turnovers. His team has been really good at handling the basketball. Just one. And what was his statement? I wrote it down. Yeah, I liked it so much. The more bites at the apple, the better, Brad. That is one for the ages there. But I think this game's going to be one in the paint, points in the paint. You've got 10 by Bradley and 12 by Brown. Rebounds, Bradley does that to everybody. They pound you on the glass. But Brown's been able to make up for that by getting to the free throw line. Absolutely. 12 made free throws for Brown that first half, just six for Bradley. As we will come back, it is 33-26. Brown with the lead over Bradley. Second half when we come back. ...than you imagine. A unique passion and heart live inside the people. St. Croix's culture and heritage will make your vacation one to remember. Let the island's signature jewelry inspire your gift giving. Explore the traditional architecture of our twin cities. Come feel the soul of the Caribbean. Visit St. Croix and experience a vibe like no other. The Emerald Beach Resort in St. Thomas is the ideal island getaway, boasting beach access with a view of the stunning Lindbergh Bay from every room. Emerald Beach Resort gives first-time and regular tourists everything they need to enjoy paradise at an incredibly affordable rate. Plus, it's the only 100% beachfront resort on the entire island and minutes from the airport. Discover affordable, accessible paradise at Emerald Beach Resort. Welcome to your U.S. Virgin Islands. Is this paradise? Obviously. But it gets better. Because here... You don't need a passport, just a good old-fashioned driver's license. Your dollars work here same as on the mainland. And ATMs too. Plus, you get double the duty-free limit. Honey, I think we're going to need to get this its own seat. 
So why do we say it's better here? Because this, my friend, is the American Caribbean. This is my classroom. This is where I'm earning my degree in nursing education. I'll use what I learn at UVI to serve my community. This is where our students learn to provide the best high quality care to their patients. Our students complete a rigorous accredited four year program. They work hard and pass the licensing exam. So far, the pass rate for the class of 2019 is 100%. Our graduates can serve anywhere in the world. I am Dr. Beverly Lansico, and this is UVI Achievement. Welcome to the Virgin Islands. The second half from Paradise about to begin. As we come to you from St. Thomas, in the U.S. Virgin Islands, we are at the University of the Virgin Islands Sports and Fitness Center. It is blue water, white sandy beaches, stingrays, turtles. It is a phenomenal atmosphere here in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Alongside Kevin Lehman, I am Brad Wells. Talked about the first half action. Brown with a seven-point lead. Kevin, you're just looking at your keys to the game to see which ones the teams are doing, which ones are holding true. Well, Bradley used that mantra, CDR. It stands for Compete, Defend, Rebound. They are doing that. This is a highly competitive game. They're defending. They're crashing the glass. And for Brown, it was win the turnover battle. So they are doing that. Just one turnover to nine for Bradley. It's way of a close base game. This is, it kind of reminds me of a Valley game. It's a grind it out, tough baskets to get type of contest. We talked about how Brown also plays kind of that physical grinding style. Ganey and Friday there with the tip in. I think Ganey got the tip in. He's been very active in today's game around the rim. There's what they've been missing. Deshaun Henry trying to get things going offensively. No points, just one attempted field goal in the first half for Deshaun Henry. Coming in averaging 13 and a half a game for the Braves. And I said five Braves had two fouls, four Braves a half. There was five of them. Jason Kent also had picked up two fouls. Four starters. All with two personal fouls, Leons, Henry, Mast, and Roberts. He had Roberts played just seven and a half minutes in that first half. And Roberts has been the key to the offense. He makes things happen for the Braves. This is Henry on the wing, guarded by Ganey. Able to get by him. Ganey with the block, but the push with the body. Will draw the foul, and so Ganey picks up his second personal foul early here in the second. Well, in the first half, the big discrepancy was the amount of times Brown got to the free throw line. You can see Bradley here with Henry attacking the rim. They're going to try and flip that here in the second half and get the Braves attempts at the charity stripe. Sometimes the paint and the points, we've talked about that with Bradley's. They've outscored their opponent as far as paint points. They do it with penetration. Right, penetration, uh, some post-ups with Henry, and offensive putbacks is what Bradley is known for, along with outstanding defense. Show to set up the offense. The dump off to Mitchell. Reboot. 
Friday's going to try and get something going. The lob to Ganey for the dunk. Soft hands and some, he's a pogo stick at the rim. Ganey. Saw that a lot yesterday in the game against Creighton as Roberts drops it in from up top. They need his offense. Terry Roberts, 26 in yesterday's game. First points in this game comes right there. He is a big part of their offense. Friday's short. Bradley down six. Roberts gets it inside to Mast. There's a post up. More paint points for the Braves. I like that out of Mast. He's really struggled three point line. This game we've seen him go inside. Now that's the second. North Carolina game that Brown played. They played completely without Alan yeah. Cho. That makes it even more amazing. They had the Tar Heels on the ropes. An all Ivy League performer back in 2019 and 2020. Ganey with the rebound. And a foul. This may go on Henry. That's that going to be number three. Number three. That's why you sit those dudes out in the first half and take your chances. Substitution rink. Mast will get a breather. Ari Boya. The seven-footer back in for Bradley and Zeke Montgomery in for Henry. Good minutes out of Zeke Montgomery. Had a good first half. This is one of those tournaments. You get three games, things like that happen, Brad. You get foul issues. You go to your bench, and you're going to find out what some guys can give you. Zeke Montgomery showed Brian Ward you can trust me in this type of game situation by his performance in the first half. Rusu Anani, Kino Lilly Jr. on the floor for the Bears. Here's Friday, the finger roll. And Boya can't hold on to it. Rusu Anani kept working for that ball, never gave up. It's good to see Boya back in the game. He limped off in the first half, spent some time with the trainer. He's on a limited minute restriction player because he's had so many foot and ankle issues. It's Eri Boya, seven foot four wingspan, number one there in the red for Bradley. Friday penetrates. Able to come away with the ball. Here's out to Lilly Jr. Leon's with the rebound. Ahead to Montgomery. Montgomery. Hits it off the leg of Boya, and it'll stay with the Bears. Timeout on the floor. It's Brown with a five-point lead. Bradley scrapping and clawing. Second half is underway. Okay, we're not going to ask for discounts on floor models, demos, or displays. Shopping malls can be a big trigger for young homeowners turning into their parents. You ever think about the storage operation a place like this must rely on? No. They just sell candles and they're making overhead? You know what kind of fish those are? No. Uh, don't be coy. <laughs> koi fish. It can be overwhelming. Think a second. Have we seen this shirt before? Progressive can't save you from becoming your parents, but we can save you money when you bundle home an auto with us. But you know what? I'm still going to get it. Today's athletes deserve more than just a sports drink with potassium-packed electrolytes, antioxidants, and B vitamins, plus no artificial sweeteners, flavors, or dyes. Body Armor Sports Drink provides hardworking hydration and more body armor, more than sports drink. Well, Brad, when you do four games a day like we did yesterday, you need some Body Armor Sports Drink. Saved us yesterday. Stay hydrated on air for eight hours. And when you're right next to a beach, too, it's it's hard <laughs> to take a little break. This is Friday. Usu Anane. 
Let's do it on. He almost got the put back. Just slid off the rim. Much faster pace here by Bradley because Roberts back in the game. Give him a good push. Here's Roberts with Montgomery, and Montgomery continues to put some points up on the board. Give him nine now in the game. He's four for six. Where's the freshman Ben? At six points in their opener against South Dakota State. Did not score against Howard and three against Missouri s &T. Nothing yesterday. Big game. Usu Anane. This is the shot. Here is a foul. David Mitchell on the backside. You kind of feel this starting to turn a little bit. Bradley, the team with more energy here in the second half. A lot of that has to do with Terry Roberts. Well, not putting the ball in his hands. Now they've got Mikey Howell and Roberts both in for Bradley. It's a two-point guard offense. David Mitchell with his third personal foul as well, and Ferrari into the game for Friday, and Roberts, another one from outside. Misdirection, that's a set play, Brad. Howell took it left, and then you have Roberts slide up into the gap, turn around, kick it back. Roberts with an easy three. All tied up here, 13.50 to play in regulation. Here's Wojcik, rises. Around the rim, rebounded by Montgomery. And Montgomery wants to attack. And it's out of bounds. The freshman, Montgomery, is feeling it. We'll have a discussion over there. And I believe it got Bennett. Both teams playing with a lot of energy. and I've been impressed by Zeke Montgomery. He looks like he belongs both physically and mentally and skill-wise. Howell throws one up for Boya, and Bradley's in front. A 7-0 run to start the second half for the Braves. Delivery. By Mikey Howell, right where the big man Boya could go and get it. This is Mitchell. Wojcik trying to answer. Bradley on a 7 0 run here since our last media timeout. Roberts in and out. Oh, he checked by Roberts. But the defensive intensity has picked up from the Bradley Braves as they've seen the ball go through the basket. Oh, there's an answer. David Mitchell finally with the answer. It was actually a 9-0 run. Over three and a half minutes, it will take a break. 12.31 to play here in the second half. This is second half of the U. At Progressive, we love your pets as much as you do, like this guy in a hat. That's why Progressive Car Insurance covers your pets for up to $1,000 if they're ever in a car accident with you. This mini majorette's gonna march your way right I'm sorry, into your can we heart. stop? I know that we're selling car insurance here, but you know, all the cute little animals, it's too much. Define too much. What's wrong with cute animals? So are we doing this or what? Nah, it's over. Well, someone's gotta break the news to Mittens. She's a diva. Think outside the oven and get Thanks Grilling with Ace. Get a Traeger grill to make tasty turkey and desserts. This week, take advantage of great deals on Traeger with free assembling delivery on all grills, $3.99 and up. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Well, the Bradley Braves had a 9-0 run. Kevin, this part of it. Whole side cleared off. Simple ball screen on the open right side. Let the big dog eat. Harry Boya punches it through. 
Boys first bucket of the game. Part of a 9-0 run, finally answered by Dan Friday's three. Montgomery leading the way, scoring for Bradley, nine points. Four of seven shooting from the floor. Roberts lost it, here comes the Bears. Mitchell to the rim, the lay-in. What a great play by Cho. Caught it and gave it right back to the pass. Here's Leon's into the lane, tries to dump it off to Boya. Howell fires the three, it's good. Boy, that is gravy on the potatoes. Two threes by Mikey Howell. Bradley now with six made three-pointers. Matching their total from yesterday with 11 and a half minutes to play in Keno Lilly with the basket. Coach Martin says, Lilly needs to shoot the ball more than what he The lob to Boya. Another. That is a bonus buckets for Bradley. Boya more of a defender and shot blocker. They've been throwing the ball up to the rim. The big man with a 7-4 wingspan. He's been gathering everything again. Lily Jr. trying to create a shot and just taken away by Leones. Freshman mistake. He's playing with the ball too much. Leones now going to attack Lily. Good defense. Shot clock to 13. Go ahead, Boya, again. Skips it over to Leones for three. Jimmy Foster, the assistant for ba Bradley. I saw him in the uh, lobby again today. For some reason, his key never works. He's always down there. But he <laughs> said the same thing. Hey, once we start making some threes, watch out. We're doing everything else good. We just needed some threes to go in. It's happening today for the Braves. Roberts can't get it to fall. Bradley by three. Roberts plays fast, sometimes too fast. That move by Lilly Jr., but the shot won't fall. Gets it back. Ferrari for three. Yes. 50-50. All tied up. That is a horse shot for Ferrari. He could have went and got a Coke before he shot that when he had so much time. Howell gets by two defenders, throws it up for Boya, tipped from behind. Kept Boya from converting. A little faster pace in the second half, Brad. They've got things rolling here. Both teams. More flow to this game. Here's Mitchell into the lane, lost it, and a foul going up. Free throws when we come back as Roberts whistled for the foul. 8.49 to play, second half action. This is the Paradise Jam. Welcome to the Virgin Islands. Oh, na, na. Oh, na, na, na. We connect. Paradise. The VI smiles with me with the emeralds of the seas. The Virgin Islands, they are calling out to me. The VI smiles with me with the emeralds of the seas. The Virgin Islands, they are calling out to me. This is UVI where research meets discovery. Groundbreaking research, impactful studies, this is our mission. With an eye towards minimizing the negative impacts of coral disease, our research aims to both protect the natural environment and have a global impact. I am Dr. Marilyn Brandt, and this is UBI Research. Welcome 
to the Virgin Islands. Oh na na, oh na na na. We connect with paradise. There's a special slice of paradise that lies in the Caribbean, where the warmth of the people greets you at every turn. Through their passion, you're going to live moments you will always remember. Savor our traditional flavors and explore the depths of the bluest ocean. Here, it's all about culture, history, and heart. If you want to feel the soul of the Caribbean, come to St. Croix and experience a vibe like no other. The Bradley Braves getting it rolling. Howell knocks in a three. And then it was Leon says that three-point shooting for Bradley much improved from today versus yesterday. Ferrari did provide an answer for Brown, but we are knotted up at 50 here in the second half. Well, in the first half, the officials were wearing out their whistles. Here in the second half, it's been three balls. Back, takes it right to the rim, blocked away by Bradley. And who's giving his body up? The smallest guy out there, Connor Hickman, the freshman, right place at the right time. Here he comes on the rotation. Hickman, six foot's going to challenge the big man. <laughs> at 6 3, taking on Owusu Anana at 6 8. It's Friday. Just continues to fight. That physicality, Kevin, you talked about how Brown needed to match Bradley. Well, and the Fr Friday is a physical guard. They've thrown the ball up. They played a little ping pong themselves. They've thrown the ball up the rim, went and got it back. It's Deshaun Henry, well defended by Mitchell. Howell off a screen. He's going to drive, kick it out to Hickman. Shot clock at two, has to fire it away. And a shot clock violation. The defense from Brown reaching another level. Well, a really good defensive stand. They tried to ISO Henry, made the stop, and they just ran the shot clock down on the Bradley Braves. Now you've got a uh, Brown team that's hot. Brown up four, we'll take a break. Back after this. The Snapchat app from Progressive rewards you for driving safe and driving less. Okay, what message did you hear this time? Yeah. Safe drivers can save using Snapshot. What Snapshot? What the commercial was about. I tune commercials out. Yeah, me too, they're always like blah, blah, blah. Tell me about it, I'm going to a silent retreat next weekend. My niece got kicked out of one of those. For talking? Grand larceny. How about we get back to the savings? Yeah. Yes, I would like right. to talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm okay. That. Think outside the oven and get Thanks Grilling with Ace. Get a Traeger grill to make tasty turkey and desserts. This week, take advantage of great deals on Traeger with free assembling delivery on all grills, three ninety nine and up. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Welcome back to the 2021 U.S. Virgin Islands Paradise Jam. The dance begins in paradise. This event proudly sponsored by Cruisin. Cruisin Rum, the official U.S. Virgin Islands rum. Now Wusu in against Mast. Feeds it inside, reverse layup good for Mitchell. There's a 9-0 run now for Brown. Good back cut. Zeke Montgomery, the freshman, got caught watching the paint dry on defense. Roberts step back three, too strong. And a foul on Henry. That's number four on Jashan Henry. A rough day for him at just two points. One for three shooting. He's only played 15 minutes in this game. Henry. And he will check out again now that he has picked up number four. 
Bradley's offense running well, much better in the second half. They shooting 55%. But this Brown team still turnovers. They've got three for the game. Absolutely incredible. Here is Friday. Turnaround shot no good. Friday had seven turnovers against Creighton. Coach Martin said that's not like him. He'll play better than he has. Friday, not a single turnover so far yet today as Roberts decides to get a close look. That dude's got the guts of a cat burglar. He is fearless. Eight points for Roberts, two threes in that bucket right there. Well, we tried that backdoor cut again on the baseline. Tip pass by Montgomery. Freshman got his paw on it. And Mitchell with the kick. It'll be Bradley basketball. Going back that two-point guard lineup, they're going to take Tara Roberts. It'll be Brown basketball. Now each time they brought in the backup point guard for Bradley, Mikey Howell, and they bring him at point, and they meet, move Roberts down the corner. They run a misdirection, trying to get Roberts a three ball. Hit it on the first one that time, a little better. Scouted by Brown, contested three that he misfired on. Tominan Cho back onto the floor for the Bears. If Cho can give him a lift with the basketball. This is Wusu Anane. Ten on the shot clock. Here comes Wojcik. Wojcik gets into the lane. Out to Lilly Jr. Oh, avoids Mast, but cannot get the shot to fall. What a fake by Lilly Jr. Hickman now an open look, and that's three, and it's a one-point game. Big production from the freshman for the Bradley Braves. It was Zeke Montgomery in the first half, and now Hickman bangs one in. Hickman, the first Brave into double figures. With 11. Friday left it short. Howell back to Mast. Mast has only fired one three point shot attempt this game. There's his second. Bradley gets another rip at it. Roberts will let it fly. Leon's put back for two. And Bradley back in front. And a timeout taken by Coach Martin and the Brown Bears. That's what Bradley does. I call it ping pong. Throw it up and go get it back. 4.14 to play. This will be our break. We will step aside. Bradley on a 9-2 run. This is day two of the U.S. Virgin Islands Paradise Jam. Welcome to the Virgin Islands. Oh, na na. Oh, na na na. Reconnect with paradise. Oh, na na. Oh, na na na. The VI smiles with me. With the emblems of the seas. The Virgin Islands, they are calling out to me. The hidden gem of the Caribbean is closer than you imagine. A unique place where passion and heart live inside the people. St. Croix's culture and heritage will make your vacation one to remember. Let the island's signature jewelry inspire your gift giving. Explore the traditional architecture of our twin cities. Come feel the soul of the Caribbean. Visit St. Croix and experience a vibe like no other.
<clears throat> Yesterday, two Bradley Braves were able to make a three-pointer. Today, five different Bradley Braves have been good from outside. Connor Hickman drops one in as Bradley just showing that three-point shooting ability. The coach Wardle says it's got to come at some point. We're seeing it in practice. It's going to translate over into gameplay. He's getting some big production from his freshman. You saw Hickman knock that one, and Hickman's leading him with 11 points. Zeke Montgomery, the other freshman with nine. There's 20 points from those two rookies for the Braves. They are a combined eight of 15 from the field. Things looking up for the youngsters for Bradley. They saw their opportunity. The door was cracked open, and those two freshmen have kicked it in. And Brown now scoreless in the last three minutes of play. You also get more comfortable, Bradley. Mikey Howell. He looks much more comfortable running this team today than he did in yesterday's game against Colorado State. Number five out there in red. There's Wojcik down in the corner, shot over Hickman. Off the mark and a shot. They're using this two point guard lineup with Howell at the point. Roberts to the two guard spot. Roberts throws it up for Boya, who throws it down. That's six points for Ari Boya. I tell you, it's tough to guard two point guards. Roberts makes things happen. They've got some great production from Boya today. Boya three for four. There's a tip pass by Howell. Lily Jr. able to recover. The throw up for Ganey goes out of bounds. With well, Boya, he practices two days, takes a day off because he's had so much problems with his lower extremities, his feet and ankle. There he is. I, and I talked to him in the hotel. What a nice kid he is. And I was asking about his pronunciation because Coach Ward always calls him Ari. I said, it's, or he calls him Ari. I said, it's Ari. He goes, well, my real name is Ari Steed. Ari Steed Boya from the Cameroon. Roberts gets fouled by Cho. That's one thing about Coach Wardle. He has the worst pronunciations of his teams, his players. He <laughs> he's tries. got some. He's got some tough ones though. <laughs> Every time I talk to him, he pronounces these kids different. And I go to the SID and say, "Okay, is it?" Ari or Ari? Because coach keeps calling him Ari. He goes, no, it's Ari. Deshaun Henry's another one. He calls Deshaun J. Sean. But sometimes that's, you go that's with why the, he's the head coach. Sometimes, sometimes you got a nickname. Sometimes yes. you go with a nickname. Here's Cho denied by Boya. Oh, he's got to be pleased with what Boya's given him today. Friday gets tied up by Mikey Howell. As you look at this squad out here right now that Bradley has on the floor, you've got Terry Roberts, newcomer, Juco kid. He's got Mikey Howell, newcomer, transfer from San Diego. Leon's a newcomer, Juco kid. Hickman, a freshman, first year. Boy, who's been a backup freshman. There's great hustle play by Friday. Deshaun Henry. Wardle's done a really good job of managing his minutes throughout this game, Brad. You know, all those foul issues in the first half kind of weathered that storm. Deshaun Henry. There's the still. All square with two minutes to play. Howell off the screen. This is Leones for three. Boya, offensive rebound, put back, denied by Ganey. But Roberts is there. Little floater, rebounded by Boya. And Again, 
Howell's going to reset. And Coach Second Wardle's chance opportunities. The rebounding battle has been won by Bradley in this game. Brown with a few more offensive rebounds, but Bradley with a couple this possession here. Here's a look at this three for the Bears. Get the block there. That is a rim protector. Boy, uh, erase it. Send it home. Boya with two blocks, six points. Seven foot, one inch big man. He's been a real factor inside. We talked about Ganey being a presence for Brown. Boya has done the same thing at the defensive end for Bradley and also given him some offensive production, some offensive rebounds. And I always talk about Bradley, it's, it's bully ball. You gotta be able to battle them on the glass because they were gonna go and get it at both ends. Brown's been good this far and Brian Will understands how important this possession is. That's why he took the timeout. Minute 35 to play. He's got one left. Brown has zero timeouts. As we come down the stretch, you see the fouls. Both teams with fouls to give. If that's, one team would get a couple buckets back to back. That's going to come into play here. This is Henry, guarded by Mitchell. Henry, little bully ball inside, but does not get the shot to fall. That's the shot they wanted. Their best offensive post player, Henry, in close. Henry. Henry Friday. What a block by Friday. Came out of the clouds to get that one. Wojcik for three, and Brown has the lead. Wojcik, where you been all day? That was huge. Paxson Wojcik, first triple game. He has seven points. Back and forth. Friday with great timing. Good pass ahead. It's a clean block down there. Wow. And then Wojcik at the other end. Not afraid of the moment. Pulls up in transition. Three-point lead. Feet set. Pretty shot. Well, Bradley has made eight threes. For Brown, that's their seventh of the game. Well, because of Dan Friday, that is a five-point swing. Huge at this point in the game. He makes the block, which we thought was going to be a run out by Henry. And it starts to transition the other way. Wojcik, the big cojones, pulls up and drills that three ball. Brown now. Got to make a stop. Wojcik, the transfer out of Loyola, Chicago. Out we said Missouri he, Valley Conference, same conference that the Bradley Braves are out of. Yep, he's used to prepping for the Bradley Braves. Now, let's see what Brian Wardle does here. He's got Roberts in that right corner. We've seen that before. They use him as the lift man. They tried to go to Henry inside that last possession when they had a timeout. Get him isolated in the block. Drink mast in for Boya for the Braves. Roberts wants to go baseline. Working against Friday. Gets the shot off. Cho with the rebound and a foul on the Braves. A defensive stop That's for the Bears. Two in a row by Dan Friday. Made the block on Henry. They tried to ISO Terry Roberts on Dan Friday. He made the stop. Okay, now you've got an issue here with Bradley because they've got to foul twice to get this thing in a one-on-one. -on -one. They cannot allow this clock to run out. They're going to have to foul right away on the catch. Bradley denying the inbounds pass, and it's tipped away. Last touch by Hickman. So it will be Brown basketball, and Coach Ward will ask him to go to the monitor here. Yep, monitor review. Hickman tipped it away from Wojcik. 
So if you're Bradley, if you don't get that steal, initial steal, you have to foul immediately. Brown's going to take it out again. Two, four team fouls on Bradley, four team fouls on Brown. But who would have thought that? Because all we did in the first half was shoot free throws. Oh, a ton of fouls. That first half, you had Bradley at 14. Brown committed eight. He had 16 free throws attempted by the Bears, seven by the Braves. I don't know who adjusted more, our officiating crew of Anthony Franklin's Scott Bennett and Ryan Martin, or the players <laughs> just cleaned up here in the second half. It's been a much more flow in the second half. We'll see now what Brown does to get it inbounded. And the ball's going to stay with Brown as Coach Martin brings Kimo Ferrari in to help with ball handling and to get this inbounded. The, the most important here is your trigger man. Cho is going to throw it in. He's your quarterback in this situation. Cannot throw a pick six. Inbounds goes to Lilly Jr. Fouled by Howell, and that's team foul number five on Bradley. Brian Worrell's telling his team, face guard, try to get the steal, then foul again. Not going to tip any pass. But you have to send Brown to the free throw line. Can't let anybody run deep on you and get an easy two either. Friday's fouled by Roberts. And that's number four on Roberts. So now you got to be thinking, make sure you don't lose a key player. And Roberts checks out. So into the game comes Max Econo played some valuable minutes and productive minutes in that first half. Here's a man deep. This is Friday. And he gets fouled by Howell. He almost got it open for an easy two. Defensive plays by Dan Friday. Now a chance to make this two possessions. It's two for two in this game today. First free throw is good. Now you're going to get the ball in the hands of Terry Roberts. It's go the fast. Roll for the second. Got to go fast, Bradley. And Brown can be aggressive because they have fouls to give. Smart play there by Mitchell. They've got one more. They some valuable time off the clock. This is where it's really tough now. Now, coach is telling them no more fouls. This, I'm watching Mike Martin telling his team, do not foul. He does have one to give, but he is up five. Here's Howell gets to the rim, off the glass around Ganey and company. 12.5 on the clock. Brown by three. Wojcik gets fouled immediately by Hickman will have another one and one opportunity. Wojcik, another excellent free throw shooter. Seven of nine on the season. He hasn't been there, not, it's a small sample size, but we've got a guy that comes from a basketball family. His dad's a coach, his brother's a hoopster. I like their chances. Free throw oh. off the mark, it's a three-point game. Bradley needs a three to tie, gets fouled by Wojcik, and that's why you save a foul right there. Yeah, good move by Mike Martin. Now you're in a situation, Brad, where you're going to switch everything on the perimeter and contest the threes, and don't leave your three on a three-point shooter. Do not foul a three-point shooter. Give him a two, no threes. Howell quickly to the offensive end and gets fouled by Cho. And so now it'll be a one and one opportunity. So, well, that's a question I like to ask every coach. You're up three closing seconds. Do you foul or defend? Does Mike Barton decided to foul. Does it matter to you if it's a one and one versus a two shot foul? Because that change Not that makes it a little more enticing. 
Howell gets the first. More to ponder now with well, the, the second the free throw. Here Do you miss is it now that if he misses it and they get the tip out, I think if you're uh, rather going, nope, missed on purpose. It's got to hit the iron, though, and it did not. So Brown will get the inbound from underneath the Bradley basket. Brad, how many times have you seen that happen? You tell a player to miss intentionally. How often do you practice that? They miss the entire rim. Cho looking to inbound. And we've got a foul on Howell before the ball gets inbounded, and that sends Friday to the free throw line. Well, Friday stepped up on that last trip and iced them both. Now, I don't like this. If you got the team huddled and you've got Dan Friday out there at the free throw line by himself. Yeah, there he's open the bench. I don't like him standing there thinking about it. And as a coach, I always like to at least put one guy up there with your shooter just so he feels like he's not all alone. Here they come. Here comes Cho. And Mitchell. Friday gets the first. Back to a three-point lead for the Bears. This is the big one. To make it a two-possession game. Dan Friday, it does not fall. Mast has to throw it ahead. It's stolen away by Friday. And Brown will run the clock out and win the second game of the Paradise Jam that they have played this Week. Brown moves to one and one. They will be in the fourth place game on Sunday at 4.15 local time. That's 3.15 Eastern and Bradley falls by three. They will be in the seventh place game at 2 p.m. local, 1 p.m. Eastern time in a tight battle. Kevin, we had runs, we had a close finish Really good second half. And I thought the difference in the game down the stretch here was that guy, number one, Dan Friday, made a great block late in the game, hit the free throws to ice it for them. But this is a Bradley team that found some answers. Some freshmen stepped up big. Again, there's Friday with an assist. Pagani inside. Roberts sat most of the first half with the foul issues for Bradley. Made him presence. Felt in the second half, hit the three, and there's the feed inside. The lift that Chow gave to this Brown team. Absolutely. Having Tavanon Cho was huge for Brown. Montgomery, How the Montgomery? freshman. How big was he? It was huge. Robertson, that lift out of the corner, hit a big three. And joined now with Brown Bears sophomore guard, Dan Friday. Dan, talk about that second half. What, what was the energy like in those timeouts and out there on the court? As it was a game of runs in that second half. Yeah, uh, we came out a little slow. We had to pick it up, stay together, you know, do what we, get, do what we know how to do. So ended up in a win, so I'm happy. Dan, you made some great defensive plays at the end of that game. Then we were able to step up and make the free throws to ice it. What was going through your head during that last minute when you made those plays? I ain't hit no shots all day, so I had to do uh, help my team out some other way. So I picked it up on defense. Well, let's turn away from basketball for a second. You've been on this island for a couple of days. What's been your favorite thing outside of basketball that you've done yourself or with your team? Just spending time with the guys, it's been fun. You know, I ain't never been to the island, so it's a nice experience to get out of uh, the States. You get a little beach time yet? Not yet, man. It's coming. It's coming for sure. Congrats on the win. We'll see you on Monday. So you get a little beach time tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Congratulations, Dan. Dan Friday. Thanks. David Mitchell, team high honors, 11 points 
in the Brown win. 65-62, Bradley led by Connor Hickman and Malavai Leons, each with 11 as well. Keno Lilly with 11 points, two off the bench for the Bears. So for Kevin Lehman and our entire crew, it wraps up game one of our second day of the U.S. Virgin Islands Paradise Jam. The next game, Duquesne and Colorado. Find it right here on ESPN3. We'll be back with more Paradise Jam in 2021.